<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back to GPS Engineering. I have <laughs> I have made probably the world's crappiest useless box. It's just totally different from most useless boxes that have a toggle switch on it. You'll find out why as I reveal my crazy design notes to you. <laughs> anyway, the idea is the little red finger that pops out stops you from being able to turn the red knob too far around. So when the lid's down, rotate the red knob. <laughs> The finger pops out and stops you from being able to rotate the knob any further. It's sort of bonkers. Um, it's quite dubious. So what's in the box then? Well, in the box we have a 3D printed plastic knobby that I've designed and made for a digital quadrature encoder. And when we rotate that around, it scares the crap out of me when it does that. <laughs> um, but ultimately... Uh, we have a little micro servo in here that is in a 3D printed plastic case. I've also 3D printed a little armature for it there. Underneath that micro servo, you can see a little Arduino Nano. And so on this side of the box here, then we have an 18650, which is a little 4 volt lithium cell. But um, yeah, so you can ultimately then you can calibrate, you can calibrate the position of when the arm activates by pressing the knobby on the top of the encoder. So just about there is perfect because when you get around there, it pops up and tells you stop. Uh, and, and basically then, I mean, yeah, it's a useless box, you know, <laughs> but <laughs> it scares me every time it pops out of the box, it scares me. Uh, I do like this thing, this is really quite good fun. <laughs> it's been a really good fun build. Let's go ahead and watch how I made it. Ladies and gentlemen, look at this lovely box. <laughs> Some flaming idiot is gluing the lid shut. What's that all about then? The same idiot is soaring through the lid. <laughs> switch inside, not the Nintendo Switch variety. The key thing with this, the lid needs to fall down quite well. We have an Arduino and, and we have a servo motor and the servo motor plugs into the Arduino like this. This is a high quality switch and the amount of pressure that it takes to flick that switch is quite incredible. I've got a feeling, I've got a feeling that this servo motor won't quite do it. We're going to have to 3D print semi-circular device that, uh, that hits the switch. We're going to have to mount this very securely inside the box. Program up that Arduino. There we go, plugged in, lights flashing. A shed load of Arduino coding happened in the background when you weren't looking. And we ended up with this, which we can now send by clicking the upload button to the Arduino. And there it is, coded, ready to go. So before we fit everything into the box, we should probably at least give it a little bit of a test. Positive would be this guy here, negative this guy here. There we go, that's the servo motor plugged into the Arduino. And then we have positive and negative for the Arduino here. I'm just running it from a single 18650. <laughs> There we go, we've got a green light on the Arduino. So in theory, this servo should do something. 
<laughs> Clearly not. So I found a small soldering error. Um, I got these two blue wires. I should use different coloured wires, really, shouldn't I? I got these two blue wires the wrong way around. The wires are now in the correct order. And uh, time to get uh, a little bit of ACDC <laughs> on the go. Ouch. Ooh, that's sort of hot. Plug her in. Bonk. There we go. And let's connect the battery up to this again. Oh, that sounds, sounds promising. Oh. In fact, if you look inside, you'll see that the gears are metal gears. They're not the plastic gears. So this has got uh, it's quite, a bit of, quite a bit of torque on this servo. Right, next thing we need to do then is 3D print some kind of arm so that it opens the box and flicks the switch to the off position. So this is Shaper 3D and um, I went ahead and designed these parts. I printed them out on my 3D printer downstairs. These are the parts here. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to see, this is clearly, this is a little servo mount case here. And this is an armature here, which would will reach over and uh, and flick the switch off. So Arduino now connected to the switch here. And the servo is sitting here just holding position at allegedly zero degrees. I'm going to have to adjust this in a minute. But when we turn the switch on, what happens is this. Now I can try and set this up inside the box now what is interesting is when this is in the off position if you listen carefully it makes a buzzing noise <laughs> so i think that's going to intrigue people and they're going to go why is the box buzzing all right so i've had a few attempts at this <laughs> as you can see uh, yeah, that one was too small, that one was too big. <laughs> but uh, anyway, yeah, I've basically designed and made a little servo holder. And it's got a little cutout in it here so that, uh, so that the cable fits in nicely. And then I've made a little armature here. And there's a hole in the armature uh, that accommodates the other armature that's bolted to the servo. Right, let's <laughs> see if we can make all of this work. <laughs> I'm a little bit unsure as to whether or not this servo motor is going to have enough power to switch off that switch. That's quite a solid switch. <laughs> so I'm just figuring out the angles at the moment. So uh, just updating a little bit of code here. Bad news, it doesn't have enough beans to be able to flick the switch. <laughs> well, uh, I think we need a bigger servo. And the other part of the problem that we're having is, uh, I'll just unplug it slightly, is even with that all the way down, the lid still doesn't shut. And it's not because the cables are getting trapped, but... Um, yeah, so I need to redesign this this armature here. Yeah, it's always disappointing when your 3D prints don't work first time around. You put them in the bin then. So I ordered some slightly higher powered servos, uh, which are in here. <laughs> and these were just a little bit too big to fit in the box. <laughs> so I've gone with a different method. I fitted a digital quadrature uh, encoder in here so hopefully as you can see when I rotate this encoder this servo now understands the angular position of this encoder and you know yeah I mean check it out it's sort of cool right the great news is is the servo now fits inside the box and I've designed a little arm here which also fits or, or goes nicely over the top of the box there so you can see that that will literally just sort of 
come round there, flip the box lid open, and move things around. Yeah, it's uh, it's getting there. It's not quite what I was expecting, and uh, we've had to put uh, a few resistors in place. Little pull up resistors in order to accommodate for for uh, for the uh, encoder here. So the encoder is quite cute, actually. I quite like the encoder because it's a push button encoder as well as a rotary encoder. <laughs> well, the servo only fits in on an angle, so it's it's in there on an angle because if you try and fit it in straight, the little arm won't go down below the box lid then you can't close the box lid properly it's not finished yet <laughs> i think i have designed and built quite possibly the world's crappiest useless box so <laughs> as, you, as you bring it out <laughs> it stops you from turning the knob any for you can't turn the knob anymore when you get to that point now seriously it's not going to do that it's it's what i'm going to do i think i'm going to have a red zone and a green zone and, and if you leave the knob in the red zone it will push the knob out of the red zone um not very far i guess the red zone is probably going to be just a tiny bit here <laughs> you need to do a bit of recoding but um <laughs> i've devised it such that you press the button to reset it on this side when you rotate the knob around here yeah. <laughs> it pokes out this is this is interesting <laughs> The lid doesn't shut. I mean, <laughs> it is the crappiest. It is the crappiest useless box in the world. But it's it's a different twist on the useless box, isn't it? So uh... <laughs> it scares the crap out of me every time it does that. Here it is, then the useless box. So uh, you press the button to reset it here, and you rotate the dial around. And as you get close to here. <laughs> <laughs> the little guy pops out here and scares the crap out of you but it stops you from being able to <laughs> to rotate it all the way around this is after the lid doesn't shut properly nothing's working as it should but this this is just making me chuckle my boobs off it really is <laughs> So you can calibrate the point by clicking the button here and as you can see <laughs> it's just the way it flings the lid open at you. <laughs> Hours of fun for all the family. This could be a Halloween box. <laughs> So the code for the device is really very simple. All we're doing here is just setting up some integers, um, creating various different uh, inputs and outputs and configuring them. And uh, then I actually set up a little serial port so you could read what was going on for doing a bit of debugging, which is quite good fun. In the loop section of the code here, all we do is look at the state of the encoder and count upwards or downwards. And we also look for a button push. And if the button gets pushed, we reset the encoder position to zero. So that's the calibration point, if you like, of the uh, of the encoder. And then if the encoder position is above 10 clicks, so if you've rotated it around 10 clicks, uh, then we open the box. <laughs> uh, otherwise, we stay inside the box. And that's pretty much it. You know, that's uh, that's as complicated as this code is. It's a very, very short piece of code. <laughs> well a very big thank you all for watching i hope you have a wonderful <laughs> hope you have a wonderful wonderful week and a wonderful weekend please give us a good old thumbs up please make sure you subscribed if you haven't already and uh, we'll see you in the next video the world's crappiest most useless box cheers guys bye for now